Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss on scientific misconduct. So we will discuss on fabrication, falsification, plagiarism. Uh, this is again uh, the part of research and publication ethics which uh, I have uh, started that particular course and uh, I have kept in the i button if you, if you have not gone through the earlier video uh, which is on why there is a need of this research and publication ethics then the philosophy and ethics and the other component uh, so we can go through those videos as well so coming into this particular uh, content will not waste much of time and will directly jump into the content which is on scientific misconduct so when when we talk about this scientific misconduct so basically this is you can see here you know somebody you know try to violate uh, the standard code that are set and when when we'll discuss this in particular to indian uh, let's say scenario or research, uh, you know, kind of uh, platform or the uh, the the thing or that being created, um, or the code which is being set or the policy which is being driven by UGC. On that uh, set of frame, we'll try to discuss what exactly it is. But now, in a general perspective, when we say scientific misconduct, so then we can say it is kind of uh, somebody is violating the standard code when um, that uh, uh, that can be in in particular to the scholarly conduct or or kind of ethical behavior where in the publication or in the professional scientific research so <clears throat> when we try to define it as per the Danish definition as you can see here it is kind of intention or gross negligence which which will lead uh, to fabrication or you know in the scientific as you can see here message or let's say false credit or kind of um, emphasis uh, to give in to a, scient a scientist so that is how and as for the swedish definition as you can see here it is kind of intention or intentional distortion of the scientific process by let's say fabrication of data text hypothesis or methods from another you know researcher manuscript form or publication so somebody is taking kind of uh, you can relate with the plagiarism or distortion of the research process in order in some different way so this is how it can be defined and coming into uh, or, or this particular fraud triangle which is uh, um, uh, uh, defined by Donald uh, and it is kind of adopted to a scientific uh, uh, misconduct where you can see at each edge of it uh, if we take this particular edge here you can see the motive of you know kind of pressure that that we normally talk about when we're in the scientific community it's kind of publish a Paris pressure so with that pressure somebody can lead to do fraud or let's say rationalization also can be one of the factor where uh, with you know with uh, kind of uh, let's say somebody with uh, is uh, kind of some someone with a senior researcher or let's say have uh, have more experience and they they reach to a point where they can uh, say this is my theory this is i have developed and there is nothing wrong in it even though the data is wrong or skewed so that is where this rationalization problem comes so that is another you know expert where it lead to fraud again then an, uh, again is kind of opportunity that uh, in many of the cases also uh, you might have seen where there is a opportunity to control the data so that you can change it change the, those data and you can go for publication so that is also lead to fraud so this is basically a triangle which is talking about um, kind of fraud that that normally happen in scientific community and lead to scientific misconduct so to avoid or to have kind of you know uh, let's say um, uh, information on that or prior knowledge on that so that you can avoid certain fraud uh, that also we'll discuss so this is how you know here if you see in this axis particularly we're talking about non-intentional and it is uh, leading toward intentional in this axis we're talking about error then misconduct and then fraud so here you see if we have wrong observation where normally it is error or non-intentional also possible but in that process somebody you know uh, let's say have wrong analysis so it is kind of diverting toward 
misconduct somewhere it is diverting toward intentional but not that uh, close to intentional again with undeclared I mean, uh, conflict of interest again it is leading toward misconduct and intentional in this way if you see here this publication bias undesired authorship then suppressing the data plagiarism fabrication or falsification all this now will lead to kind of uh, intentional and fraud both so this these are if you see this particular case this three plagiarism falsification and fabrication these are kind of um, kind of you know we can say fraud and along with intentional and this uh, main uh, cause for this scientific scientific misconduct so this to be avoided even all this to be avoided so this we'll try to discuss what is scientific misconduct what is all these three components so why why this happen actually when we talk about misconduct in particularly so this thing already we have discussed publisher pressure is there and desire to go ahead you can see in this image also like senior professor or researcher how how i will not speak much on that you can guess what is happening there and here as well and somewhere the character issue you can link here negligence cultural differences fraud rationalization all that you know can lead to misconduct or scientific misconduct so as here also you know some colleague like let's say is trying to say to to the professor who has developed this particular robot they are saying that there uh, it is uh, there is something wrong in it there is mal malfunctioning in it but that professor or the scientist is not ready to accept that particular you know and uh, as you can relate to the rational, uh, rationalization uh, where uh, uh, there there he will be thinking towards publishing in a high end high impact factor journal let's say in nature and with uh, without uh, you know considering all the limitation or the drawback uh, let's say he goes for publication somehow let's say it get published but again uh, it can like now will be uh, uh, um, we will discuss much on the retraction watch so uh, in later phase where you will be able to understand why you know if we need to we need to know about this misconduct if you, if it is not known or how you can avoid this scientific misconduct uh, those can happen intentional or let's say non intentional so how to avoid this uh, research misconduct so that uh, the retraction uh, can be avoided at a later phase. So this is again kind of summarizing again. Uh, so what is fabrication as for the Office of Research Integrity, uh, U.S. Department of Health and uh, Human Services. So they're talking about uh, fabrication is kind of making up data or result or recording or reporting them. Whereas uh, falsification is kind of uh, um, manipulating research material, equipment, processor or changing or omitting data result such that the research is not accurately presented in the research record. So there is uh, falsification whereas the plagiarism when we talk about uh, you are simply kind of uh, um, taking that person idea and assuming that it is your own idea or your own processes result or what so this is serious so we'll be discussing on plagiarism in my next video then research misconduct uh, that does not include honest error or differences of opinion so this is what and when we talk about this uh, how to differentiate it so a simple way of uh, will 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 focus more much on this plagiarism in the later phase as i have told but simply you can say copy paste kind of thing uh, you can relate with plagiarism without giving proper credit so that that also will be uh, doing there on fabrication you see here uh, it is somewhere you know uh, in this range but you are writing 100 farad so this is fabrication it is not 100 farad so this is fabrication in this case 
falsification where you want to let's say 100 uh, felt or let's say 37 degrees centigrade you want to reach or let's say some some temperature and you are fabricating it or falsific uh, you are kind of falsifying that one with some kind of you know method or process so as to achieve that desired result so this is falsification so now plagiarism falsification and fabrication you can define or differentiate in this way so this is where uh, why who are doing it uh, as you can see forced to publish uh, more so in that process student researcher uh, professional employee lab technician are uh, you know uh, they they are doing it and the consequences of uh, this uh, the the urge to publish more and the role of this evaluator here if you see so when we talk about the scientist let's say or academician researcher or student who try to write new data or like let's say try to publish uh, their uh, uh, you know result in some uh, journal so in that process uh, with kind of temptation or let's say to build up the profile uh, they they select or let's say he or she select a journal which is uh, let's say there is no quality on it or it is kind of predatory journal so in that process in the initial phase uh, let's say somebody publish it but again at the other hand you can see there are the grid cameras it can be of institution stakeholder where you are affiliated then COPE what is COPE Committee on Research and Publication Ethics we will discuss on this also in the later phase then reviewer editors are there uh, as you can see here uh, if it is a journey where you or the final destination is kind of publication of your result this one to re reach that journey you have to see the frame you know guideline or or the set of uh, you know standard rules regulation that are there or let's say the similarity report when you talk about it is it has to be um, less than 10 percent of you know uh, the similarity index so all let's say sort of thing we have to take into consideration and within a you can say ethical boundary you have to design uh, your role so that it can you can publish but if you do detour from the set rule or road or path then detour with temptation or let's say some kind of uh, where uh, you want to have uh, as we have discussed about the opportunity or let's say rationalization or uh, publish or press pressure or in order to get more funding so those those can be the factors so those to be avoided this factor to be avoided and you have to follow the long route without going the straight line okay so those those things are there so this is what i thought of um, uh, discussing in this video thank you for watching uh, please do like uh, the video if you you, you like the content and uh, please share among with your friend and colleague and uh, if you have not yet subscribed please do subscribe because i'll be coming with similar kind of video uh, in a near future thank you for watching it